We are here at Commodity Classic with Brett Davis, president of the Ohio Soybean Association. Brett, as we head into the 2012 spring planting season, take the pulse of your membership. Uh, membership, uh, I think, is very well right now with the prices that we have. Uh, we've uh, In Ohio, we've had a wet fall, wet summer. Uh, most areas where we're wet. Uh, in fact, we had a lot of guys that just finished up harvest not too long ago uh, in January, and we were hoping, I heard a little bit of ground being moved last week at home, uh, but our, uh, our ruts weren't dry enough, I guess, at home. So, uh, but we have a lot, to, uh, a lot of tillage movement and things like that, but as far as the, the uh, outlook for soybeans in Ohio, it looks well, it really does. Do you anticipate any dramatic shifts in acreage or will historical rotations by and large be respected? I think the, the uh, rotation will be respected. The only thing is with the wet fall that we had, a lot of wheat did not get planted. Like myself, we only got about half the wheat planted that we normally plant in our normal rotation. So, uh, and I think we're uh, looking at about the same rotation as what we've had dividing in half and half. Um, but uh, it all depends on what the price does. I know the market's trying to buy some acres right now, and uh, I guess it's the poll. I was asked a couple of weeks ago by the Chinese, uh, when, when do you make your decision about what you're going to plant? Uh, I, I told them, I says, well, really about the 15th of, of May when we decide what, what's left and what we can do is when we r truly decide. But as far as the uh, profits in either crop, um, I know corn's a little bit more profitable right now, but there's also a lot more risk in it too. So um, I still think that we're going to be a, a, on a normal rotation with a uh, most farmers a half-half split. Let's talk about uh, organizational policy objectives and goals for this year. What would those be? Uh, right now, we're working very hard on water quality issues. Uh, the governor, uh, Governor Kasich, put down uh, uh, a. Uh, uh, genre that he wanted a, a, the question solved about the phosphorus issues in the lakes because in Ohio the fishing industry is a great tourism spot in, in the northern uh, part of Ohio in Lake Erie and uh, he kind of put down a, a, a mandate that it had to be done so we worked very hard and a lot of uh, brainstorming sessions about how we can deal with this that farmers can can uh, still deal with with the situation but we also need to better understand where this phosphorus is coming from because we've known for years or we've been thought to know for years that once phosphorus is applied it stays there and now we're finding that uh, phosphorus is moving in different ways and in fact uh, the uh, Ohio Soybean Council has put down the uh, money to make a three-year study to find out exactly where it's moved. So it's, it's kind of putting the uh, cart before the horse, but we still have to come up with a situation to know how the farmer can deal with it to keep our, our tourism uh, industry strong in Ohio, but yet keep farms very sustainable. Much discussion about the farm bill in Ohio. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, the farm, that's, that's the trouble. We've came up, come up with a lot of different ways to tackle the farm bill but the trouble with the farm bill it's a it's a northern united states southern united states uh, difference so uh, as corn growers and soybean growers and the wheat association we've kind of come together and had a good uh, uh, way to saw to come up with an answer to that and we know that we're going to have to be uh, diligent about where we're cut also but uh, it's the trouble is, is the southern states have uh, with their rice and cotton, um, it's a different situation completely. And we deal with that different ways. So it's been uh, kind of eye-opening to see the, the farm bill wholly about how it affects the whole country, not just our, our region. Your time at Commodity Classic, uh, anything stand out? Anything you saw perhaps? Uh, in the uh, trade show or any seminar or, or symposium that you attended, well, what, uh, what takeaways uh, made, made an impression on you? Uh, I've been coming to Classic for about 10 years now. Uh, the thing is about Classic is, is good farmers talking to good farmers. Uh, we learn different, uh, in fact, I talked to a gentleman from Texas yesterday morning who was a sorghum grower. 
and you understand how the weather and their situations affect them. And I, I think it really brings us together as farmers, knowing that uh, uh, what we produce, how it affects the whole country and the whole world too. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that go on that as a farmer in the past, we think that we just deliver commodity to the elevator and don't think about where it goes because it was used in our backyards. Well, now as a world market, uh, that commodity could be shipped halfway around the world and used for food across the, across the world. So we need to think of this as a world economy now. And that's the one thing that's probably changed in the last 10 years that the associations have made that, uh, made that evident to us as farmers that where our market truly is. Brett Davis is the president of the Ohio Soybean Association. Brett, thanks for stopping by. I'm Stuart Doan reporting for AgriPulse from Commodity Classic. Thanks for watching.